Cartel and Cars Ireland have good news for the independent workshops. Hyundai and Kia have their own diesel gate. Hella brake by wire systems. Tesla's factory in Germany. Volvo hit want to hit a higher level. Volkswagen buy Europe car. Isuzu, Denso, Toyota and Hino team up together. Hello and welcome to this week's Motor Zen News. <laughs> The private car park in Ireland is getting bigger and older and when I'm speaking to workshop owners around the country and they're trying to figure out what is their future like, what does the future hold for them with the whole onslaught of EV and very unclear as to where things might be going. I think you really need to look at these numbers and you clearly see where things are going and that the future is very very bright for independent workshops. In August 2021 there was 2.4 million cars in the private car park. Um, between May 2021 and 2022, that increased by 24,699. This is information that's just been released by Cartel and Cars Ireland. The fleet is getting older. Used car transactions have been getting lesser every, lesser is not really a word, get, reducing every year since 2017. And, and every year the average age is becoming older. So drivers are keeping cars longer and cars are getting older. In 1999, the fleet in Ireland was 1.3 million. Uh, in 2009, it was 2.2 million. And now it's sitting at almost 2.4 million, just 2 point, over 2.4 million. In August 1999, the average age was 6.1 years. In 2009, it was 6.9 years. And this year, the average age is 8.8 .8 years. So when you're trying to work out where's your future, it's very simple. There's a huge shortage of skilled technicians, skilled mechanics in our industry. And the analogy I keep making is that the number of people is reducing by the number of vehicles is increasing. And from these figures, you can, this stacks it up. These are the statistics that says that the future for the independent repair shop is very, very bright as people keep their cars longer and we have more cars. Hyundai and Kia are in court in Frankfurt. Uh, Germany Frankfurt, there was a raid that took place on some offices of Kia and Hyundai recently and it's the same thing as what happened to Volkswagen in 2015, it's the diesel gate situation it's the suspected uh, defect devices is, is fitted to Hyundai and Kia um, they're talking about 220,000 vehicles in the Volkswagen situation it was said that I think it was only Bosch that was involved in this situation Delphi are also involved so this is currently in going through the courts over in Germany so it looks like there's it was always said from 2015 that they were all at it, but it looks to me now some of these cases are only coming up now, and that's what five, seven years later from the Volkswagen situation. Volkswagen paid out 2.6 billion uh, from from it for its Dieselgate uh, situation in total since since that 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 situation occurred. Um, Hella are to start to develop mass production brake by wire systems. Uh, this system allows to have a simulated feel and effort, no mechanical connection, and they say they're going to push this out and it's going to become commonplace over the next five to eight years. Hella were bought out by a company, but uh, company called Forvia in the last year or two. And when you look at this, you think, why did they do these things, or what's the reason? But when you when you look in more closely, one of the big reasons for this is. They say it's going to require fewer parts and it's going to be easier to attach them to the car and the assembly line. So sometimes when we look at things from a mechanic, from an engineering point of view, from the aftermarket point of view, we're wondering why. Sometimes these things are designed primarily because you can reduce down the labour content and the parts content on the production line. And Hell are saying that this is definitely going to be mass production over the next couple of years. Uh, so you've made it to the middle, great achievement. And if you could, please possibly like, comment and subscribe. Thanks for that. Germany 
being the home of automotive manufacturing, been synonymous with cars and car manufacturing, all the biggest brands, all the best brands. And this is a really interesting statistic. Tesla's Giga plant in Berlin is the largest industrial player in the region. So for a company that's only gone into Germany in the last couple of years and gone into the homeland of the car, Tesla is certainly making an impression. They employ 5,000 people at that plant now and they are targeting 12,000 people. They're going to give a 6% 6, 6 pay rise in August. They produce at the moment 1,000 vehicles per week um, and by the middle of the decade, 2025, 2026, when they start to hit the full number of people in the factory and the maximum capacity, they're looking to produce 9,600 vehicles per week. So for what isn't a German brand to go into the home of cars virtually and perform like this is really interesting and it goes to show you the strength of the electric vehicle and the electric brand. ACEA is a grouping of manufacturers, European Automobile Manufacturers Association. So all the big brands in Europe were in this organization. 16 major manufacturers. Volvo has decided to pull out of this group. Um, and Volvo says they're pursuing more ambitious, sustainable targets. So effectively what Volvo is saying is that the association is setting a target based on the coming together of the 16 manufacturers and Volvo is saying it's not enough, it's not fast enough, it's not um, a high enough target. So Volvo is saying they want to become fully EV compliant by 2030. But when I look at this I keep thinking well Volvo was kind of like almost out of business a couple of years ago before the Chinese invested in it. So I think it was interesting with Volvo. They had Volvo, yeah, it's a traditional brand, but it's actually a new brand because until it got the investment from China, it really was going nowhere. Well, it was, it was going downhill rapidly. Um, with the Volvo, with Ford selling it and the Chinese buying it out, I think they repositioned it and they said, oh, we've got, we got a traditional brand, but what we'll do with this brand is we we'll completely um, reinvent it. And they reinvented it to being EV. So they kind of started off with a clean sheet. So now they're saying, ah, you traditional car brands and we're a traditional car brand, but you guys aren't trying hard enough. But I don't regard them as a traditional car brand. I think they're just a new EV entrant. And again, China would possess a lot of EV technology that's probably been into the Volvo product in Sweden also. Volkswagen, and this is another picture of the future and a picture of where the industry is going long term. Volkswagen uh, have completely bought a Europe car. And you think, well, wow, Grant, should they're just going to put their renters into, into this sector. But it's a lot more than that. Um, Volkswagen is, is, have got this thing that they call new auto strategy. And this is a car ownership or car involvement or connection with a car at any type of a level. What they're saying is that through Europe Car, you can have car sharing for a few hours. You can have car subscription for multiple months. Uh, in the second half of the decade, they're going to integrate uh, autonomous cars into this program. Uh, and one line that comes from this is, they're saying this is more about using and less about owning. So it's interesting that this is what Volkswagen are setting out as a new strategy. So that line, more about using and less about owning, I think it's some, something to show the direction the industry is going in, in that people will have access to cars and access to mobility, but the idea of owning would probably become less and less as we go more into the future. Again, the direction of where the industry is going, what fuels are we going to use, what form of energy are we going to use. Isuzu, Denso, Toyota and Hino have joined together to do research into hydrogen for heavy diesel commercial vehicles. So again, again the electric, if you look at some of the, of the bump coming off truck manufacturers, now you see electric trucks so much out there, but yet now when you drill down and talk to these people, you realize that they're proposing these things for urban centers. Uh, yet now when you look at the headlines, it looks like trucks are almost going to be as electric and going as electric as cars. But the more you drill into it, the more you discover electric doesn't work 
for heavy haulage over long distance. So Isuzu, Denso, Toyota and Hino, big, big brands from, from, from Japan are really uh, looking at the hydrogen side of things. And another separate story, but the same was, there's a group of companies in Germany that have come together and have done a deal with a company in Australia called Fortescue Industrial. Uh, and that deal is about importing large quantities of green hydrogen from Australia back to Germany. So again, this hydrogen thing, some people say it's a pipe dream, but yet and all you still see that big brands and big organizations and big companies are saying, look, we're, work we're working on hydrogen and hydrogen is coming. So it's still not clear where we're going, but there's lots and lots of activity around hydrogen. That was this week's show. Thanks for watching. And if you could, please like, comment and subscribe. And we'll talk to you next week.